here with Mady Rose, and Mady Rose is an amazing illustrator and painter. You see some of these paintings behind us, and um, someone who I am really lucky to call a friend in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think it has happened very naturally, but with a lot of, um, you know, I always think about it like I'm going around a mountain and I'll get lost and, you know, like scrape my knee and just, it hasn't been a very linear path. It's been like going around and up and up. And um, at some point it sounds like you were just like, that's it, I'm going back to art school. Mm -hmm. But I went back to art school um, at the California College of Arts for painting and illustration in 2005. My husband and I, we went to Mexico for <laughs> a few months to live and be inspired and live cheaply. Um, and that was when I started to pull my portfolio together when it, we were in Oaxaca and we rented an apartment and we made a lot of art. And so that was... Step one. Step go one. To go to Mexico. Exactly. <laughs> At that point I was thinking, like when I come back, I'm going to go to art school. And then I realized that that was actually a longer process in that I had to save money and I ended up, you know, waitressing for years and trying to um, save money. So it was, it was a long process and it took some, some planning on that end. So one of the things that um, I talk a lot about and one of the big mm -hmm. reasons that I started this show is just talking about creative sustainability. Yes. Um, you and I have been doing our, our art and, and trying to be creative full time for a long time. Inevitably, that means that you have to sort of all of a sudden run a business. Right. And you have deadlines mm -hmm. and people expecting things from you. So um, how do you stay connected to your self-care or your yes. creativity? What does that look like for you? Yeah, it's, it's a daily uh, struggle to find balance. I get into this sort of tunnel vision that, you know, I have to be constantly checking my email and responding to people and acting very reactively instead of sort of staying centered and realizing um, that I get a lot more done if I take care of myself first, if I put on my oxygen mask, you know, like first, instead of trying to please all the other people who are asking for things for me. And um, yeah, that's been a long process of sort of figuring out that I can trust that I will still have work even if I go at a slower pace or that I have, you know, like figuring out that balance that, yeah. that self-care is important. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's taking the time to actually sit down and say like, okay, what works for me best? Like when I'm not a morning person, so, and I'm not really a night owl anymore either. So it's like, when is that time? When is that like most? <laughs> I guess I can never work. Weird. <laughs> hmm. Like I used to pull all-nighters all the time, but that's like not really working. Um, and so realizing like, okay, like 10 to 4, for example, is like a really good time for me to work and making my day around that. Like in the morning, I'm not as alert, so I'll just have like a slower day and try to do things that are like easier for me that don't require as much creativity. But it's really, um, it's like, yeah, it's getting to know myself better and like accepting, you know, my schedule that might be different from what our- Like a normal- Yeah. Yeah. Recently, I mean, it's very exciting. I'm working on, um, an art book working um, that's going to be, you know, inspiring. Yeah, what's the book called? Tell it's me. called A Daring Adventure in Paint, um, inspiring techniques in, um, <laughs> I should know it, in collage <laughs> Well, and they paint. went back and forth, right? You had like 50 different choices. Right. And um, and this book is really exciting, and I'm working with a photographer and showing different painting techniques. Um, but I've never done it before. And so it's a lot of scheduling with the photographer and working with the editor. And wouldn't you know that during this time, I also got asked to do two children's books, which is also like a, a huge dream of mine. Right. But it's like- That's what you took classes on years I and years know. ago. I <laughs> know, but all three are due August 1st. And so I think I have some wiggle room um, a little bit with a couple of the projects, but they're all still gonna be due around the same time. All that to say that 
it's tricky because I'm so excited about it, but I don't want to just recreate the nine to five wheel. You know, right. like, like that's why that's would you why be in business I, for yourself. If, exactly. Right. Like I could make a lot more money and have a much more balanced life in so many ways <laughs> if I just got a job. But we all know you wouldn't be happy because you'd be doing a job and you wouldn't be doing your creativity. So yeah. No, so it's, it's about finding that balance. It's about saying, okay as an independent and a, mm -hmm. an artist and a small business owner that's like, you can paint that canvas however you want it to look. Exactly. Being a painter, like there are all these metaphors, you know, like well, as I'm painting, I'm, I'm like really very able to like take risks, like when I'm painting and like make mistakes and um, you know, like it's this process and it's like, um, like my painting process will look really ugly and chaotic and then I'll like sort of smooth it over and heal it but in life it's much harder to do like I feel like it's especially you can't just paint over it. no as women like oftentimes we're like these people pleasers and we feel like we have to do this and this and this and we have so many different roles we're playing and um, so lately I've been like game changer okay like bring my paintings into my life, like that attitude about, um, you know, making mistakes, like, yeah. and it's, it's, I feel, you know, it's so elemental, but it's like, it's important stuff, you it's know, kind like of that whole, like, this is your canvas. What this is my canvas. Like? Exactly. And, and learning that lesson, like as I go. And yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it is awesome. So tell us a little bit about your process. Okay, my process, I work in two different ways, one of which is more um, illustrative and starts with a sketch. And I sometimes use this stuff called transfer paper, where you can actually transfer your drawings, and you can use them multiple times, um, onto, you can transfer your sketch onto an original um, canvas and then make the drawing that way, so it's a little bit more planned out. And then, <laughs> the other way is to be a little bit more loose and expressive and um, kind of create the painting from my imagination as I go. Um, and so I was looking at this painting. This is kind of a combination because it wasn't for a client, but it is, it's more flat and it came with an idea before, before I painted it. Um, so cute, they're riding the elephant. I know, so I have a lot of paintings like this, like there, those mirrored elephants over there. And the, the symmetry. And the deer, right? the symmetry. And that was because I was in Vermont and I went to like this flea market, thrift store, um, antique store, I can't remember. And I found this awesome book that just, it showed early 18th American art. And I just loved how- 18th century. 18th century, um, is that right? Yeah. American folk art. American folk art, and just how like these characters are so sort of naively drawn, and a lot of them are facing oh, each other. Yeah, so that was really my inspiration. This book in itself like spawned this whole new series of work for me uh, a few years ago, and um, I had them in a show, and it's cool because then it became, you know, like I started getting them printed on canvases and like, you know, magnets were made out of them. And it just, it, I started licensing that work. I don't think we had talked about like Renegade Craft Fair and just yeah. how like things like that, like I never would have thought from doing Renegade that um, where I'm selling magnets and prints and all of that, that, you know, I, I got a, t-shirt deal with Patagonia and then, you know, did several t-shirts and I'm just looking. I gave one to my niece. Yeah. Oh, cool. Like this is a long sleeve one. But just like the variety of art opportunities that you just never know Boy. with what you're doing, where well, your art's going to be. And it's such a beautiful testament of just like create, create, create. Yeah. Then once you do and you get inspired by this one thing and then you mm -hmm. put that out there then somebody else can have that it's almost like it provides that opportunity to then be like oh we would like to put this on magnets as artists like we have all these different impulses and and people go different routes like some just show strictly in galleries or some right. do illustration and licensing and for me it's really like patchwork like all 
you know, I'm trying all these different things, teaching online courses, but in person too, and, you know, doing writing illustration, a writing a book, and being generally like schizophrenic, but I like it that <laughs> way. And, um, but I was thinking recently, you know, like sometimes it's hard when I feel like I have so many different styles. And then I was sort of thinking about how actors have, you know, they play in different roles, right, like totally. comedies, Good call. right? Dramas, like, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's well, just like these various sides of... And do you feel like that you actually enjoy shaking it up and having all those different ones? Or would you say that, like, mm -hmm. hands down, there's one that you enjoy more than the other? I think I like shaking it up, but there are definitely paintings that feel more authentic to me mm -hmm. and then other ones that I'm doing because I know that, you know, potentially they could be on a card. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a mixture of like making personal work and commercial work, but I think I always need to make personal work or else yeah. I'm not evolving. If there's like artists out there that wish that they painted more, but they don't know how to get started or, you know, they're just, you know, feel like they don't know how, like what would you say to somebody who's kind yeah. of beginning that has this, like that looks at your life and is like, oh my gosh, she's an artist, a painter, Aww. has this whole awesome studio, like what would you I recommend? would say, I mean, I think most people have a kitchen table. That's exactly where I started. Um, and, you know, my roommate was annoyed with me for... <laughs> Having for, a paint everywhere. For many months, Jesse. Um, and I think... Yeah, just get started. Like, there are so many great books out there. Um, one that hopefully I'll be publishing soon. Yeah, about, You know, totally. different painting techniques and, or take a class if you can at um, wherever, your community college or online. And get your paint on. Get your paint on. <laughs> yeah, I think there's, there's no end to different ways to be inspired, but I think it's just making a little bit of time to do it. Yeah, just starting, even mm -hmm. if it's in small ways. Yeah, and even if it feels all wonky, like you're not, you don't really have like a huge studio, but you can still do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like this is maybe the more um, hardcore approach, but like get a show, you know, at a coffee shop or wherever. Like right? deadlines are really great. You know, yeah, for like artists. one of my first <laughs> shows was at a really divey bar and I was just like, nice. okay, it's out there, you know.